You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. And this is episode number 851. Got a little something special on tap today, which is giving away that annual membership that we give away every 50 episodes. Oh, very cool. Very excited about that. It is. Yeah, I love doing that. It's always fun. Yeah, it is always fun. We're also really excited and grateful for you know everyone who has been listening. Again, thank you for those reviews. Really do appreciate it. They mean a lot to us. Uh, and we are uh, very excited about the upcoming classes that are coming out. If you are struggling with different parts of business, uh, we're seeing this trend where a lot of drone pilots are getting very good at becoming drone pilots because they understand how important it is that quality will always trump, you know, uh, you being in 10 different directions at one time. You know, focus on one course until success or follow one course until success. That's it. Focus follow. and you could say focus and follow, I suppose. Yeah. Follow and focus. But the point is, is that this business course is meant to provide you with systems, with information to help you better your business. Because even if you make one small piece of your business more efficient, it's going to mean more money in your pocket. And that's how DroneU plans on giving back. We brought in a bunch of different experts to do this business course. We're going to be launching it very soon. And then beyond that, we have a lot of new mapping courses coming up and some industrial grade classes. We're working on a lot of new reviews as well, so stay tuned for that, including our new Ultimate Mapping Drone, which I've been flying around the parking lot and taking cool pictures with. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, playing with that Z30. But anyway, um, good news is that uh, the business course may be launched to the existing membership. It may not be. But if you're not a member, you'll never find out. So become a member, droneu.education. All right. What are we doing? Are we ready to listen to the question? I or actually, we're... what we should do real quick is give away that uh, annual membership. Sounds good. Let's do that first. Drum roll, please. So we're using a random number generator. It's basically Google's simple one here. Numbers 801 through 850, generate. And 02. wow, 802 is the winner, which I don't have it right in front of me, but I bet I can find it really, really, really quick. 802 is... No way. You are stinking kidding me. Who is it? It's Ken in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> he did ask a lot of questions. So that is pays to play. Pays that's... to play. Wow. Yeah. No. And, and so here's the thing about Ken in New Jersey. Hey, Ken in New Jersey. He asks a lot of questions, but he asks a lot of uh, pertinent questions, relevant questions, detailed questions. And so they get on because they're really good. So, wow. Congratulations, Ken. Um, yeah, that's awesome. How do you fix a drifting horizon line, and why is an IMU calibration important? I love this question. I absolutely love this question, Rob. And I know if Peter from DJI, if he were here as well, he would love this question because I can't tell you how many complaints that I got from Peter <laughs> about people not having calibrated IMUs when coming to a subject tracking station because most people don't understand the point of IMUs. And if you actually watch a lot of the footage, like uh, what channel? Oh, HGTV. Uh, I forget which. It's one of their new flipping shows in Texas. Um, but the drone footage a lot is of them. horrible. And there's really? always drifting horizon lines, and you can see like the drone was taking a turn, and the gimbal's not, you know, actuating properly for it. Um, I mean, you can see it on the Discovery Channel too. There is actually a lot of footage on TV that's from poor, very, very bad droning. Um, and it, I think it's just because, you know, people get really excited. I, I totally empathize, and I totally understand. They get really excited when they're out there. You know, they just love being on set. They love working. Or some people took the job for less money, and they're not as, uh, you know, cognizant of what's going on. And they don't run through these systems. You know, the FAA says you're supposed to do a pre-flight check, and you're supposed to follow the manufacturer's guidelines. That means you do an IMU calibration. You do an IMU calibration on a level surface. It's better if you do an IMU calibration in the air conditioning because it's going to be faster for your drone to start up when you're out in the field. On top of this, the IMU, if you don't do an IMU calibration, it's like if you're flying around drunk. 
that's a that's kind of how Peter puts it. He's yeah. like, let me put it to you this way. He's like, if you went to the bar and you had eight beers, would you go out and fly? Would you go out and drive? No, 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 no. Probably wouldn't do that. Okay, well then, why would you let your drone operate that way? Or, or better yet, if you were to have thirty beers, would you go out <laughs> and be drive? In the hospital, but would, okay. Would you go out and drive? Would you go out and fly? Probably not. So interestingly, so, it's go ahead. Finish, so finish it's your like thought. your drone is flying drunk when yeah. you don't do an IMU calibration. That's why you get that drifting horizon line mm -hmm. and all the problems, especially when you're doing complex banking turns or subject tracking maneuvers. Right, which is why it mattered to his station probably more than the others, particularly some of the mapping stations, because we're referencing the fly-in as far as subject tracking is concerned here. Well, mapping in the the engines do have, I believe, it's ten degrees of play from on the roll axes if photos are taken mm -hmm. off off kilter. It can, I think, the margin of error is ten percent. It can account for that. Yeah. So the instructors, though, at some of those other stations, they weren't as concerned about it as as Peter was, and that could just be because Peter's so familiar with it. Obviously, although all the other guys are as well, but. It really mattered in the subject tracking station just because of trying to get those smooth shots and the reveals and follow the car and all that kind of stuff. But it doesn't matter. Ultimately, you should do it regardless. Well, right? it, it does matter because, I mean, like, in, they noticed it also in the real estate videography course. Sure, yeah. So, and cinematography. They, and they there's realized a it less because everyone went to subject tracking before real estate. That's true. And so, he had gotten everybody fixed by the time mm -hmm. they got to real estate. Yeah, Peter fixed 22 drones at the flying. Did he really? 22. Wow. Yeah. So every time I turn around, he wasn't teaching. He was working on a drone. Yep. Yeah, he was awesome. But anyway, guys, your IMU calibrations are so critical. You need to do one really before every single flight. Um, you know, I used to say do compass calibrations every 20 or 30 miles from one job to the next. You really should do them. Make sure you do them in a field. Don't do them near metal objects. Don't do it on a parking structure. Don't do it in between tall buildings. These things matter, and people really aren't getting it. So, I mean, here's the, here's the point of me saying that all those TV shots are so bad. It just proves that there is still an epic opportunity in the drone industry, that if you are doing quality stuff consistently, you will get jobs. And again, if you educate your clients on that horizon drifting line, like literally go on HGTV, record for an hour, and you'll see it, I guarantee, 10 times, and just be like, this is the quality of stuff you can expect if you're gonna hire X. This is the quality of stuff, and you show them your reel that you can expect from me. Show them color, dynamic range, showcase the horizon line, everything. These things matter, guys. Another issue that I'm seeing all the time, by the way, on TV is no one's using an ND filter and their shutter speed is so fast. You're getting just a crazy amount of aliasing. It's either aliasing or more ray. I'm, I'm, I'm screwing this up right now, but it's just awful. You can tell bad footage because the shutter speed is too fast. Horizon line is off. Like there's just so much. It's easy for any experienced drone pilot to be like, that's garbage. That's garbage. That's garbage. And I know that a lot of drone pilots probably watch TV and say the same thing that I do. And I'm sure everyone's wives are sick of hearing, look, it's a drone shot. Ooh, 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 it's jerky. It's bad. You know, <laughs> I'm sure they're all sick of hearing it. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and you can make a huge, you can make huge progress in terms of doing what you're talking about by simply do, taking care of things like an IMU calibration. Yes. You it's so a lot of critical. mileage out of that. Guys, it is also so easy to do an IMU calibration. It's, you know what, maybe I should just go do one on my bird and we'll throw the screen recording in the podcast. I think that's what I'm going to do really quick. On that bombshell, do an IMU calibration every time you fly. You'll thank yourself for it. Put it in your systems, in your pre-flight check. And this is something that I think even the FAA, when they change things and update things, I think an IMU and compass calibration like should be required uh, to be done. Obviously, in racing drones, you don't do a compass calibration because there is no compass. So um, I'm aware of that for everyone who would comment about that. I appreciate it. Um, again, if you enjoyed the show, you found it valuable, or there was some information that you found useful, would you do us a favor and share the show with your friends? We would greatly appreciate that. Or leave us a review on iTunes, Overcast, Stitcher, or Spotify, wherever you download podcasts, please leave us a review. It really means so much to us. That's going to do it for us today, guys. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.